I'm disconnecting the uh, sway bars here really quick. It's a T55 Torx bit and uh, an 18 millimeter. Just put the wrench on this side, let it get caught, and then crank away. Um, just one on each side. For the upper control arms, there are 15 millimeter bolts and there's cam bolts on the other side. Um, luckily, I didn't have to try and grab this little thing with the vice grip, but that's probably what I'd have to do on a more rusted vehicle. But I was just able to get it, just loosen it right here, and this thing didn't spin. And then uh, that should be the upper control arms. Uh, the rears look about the same. Okay, so uh, we removed the steering stabilizer. It had a 5 8 here and then an 18 millimeter nut in the back. And then there is a where the drag link connected was just another uh, 5 8 inch bolt. Um, next, I went after the shock mounting bolts on the bottom. Uh, there's two bolts for each shock. They're just 13 millimeters, nut, uh, the nut and the bolt. So just get under there with the wrench pretty easy. I went about disconnecting the uh, brake lines right here. It's a 9 16 um, I'm actually going to wait until I jack it up a bit so I can get my drip hand underneath because it's going to start leaking a ton of brake fluid right away. Um, yeah, just one on each side, pretty easy. The lower control arms were easy once I found the right size. I had to get a 13 16 socket and wrench, which I didn't own before, but after that it came off pretty easily. Uh, so once I jacked up the axles, I took the tires off, I broke the lugs free while I was on the ground, and then deal with these uh, cotter pins. So you just pull the cotter pin, remove the castle nuts, 5 eighths, and then uh, we're lucky enough to be able to just hit it down with a mallet and pop it out, otherwise I got a pickle fork set that you can rent from uh, AutoZone for free and uh, you can pry it in between and pop this out, but this way is better because it I didn't damage the uh, grease boot at all. Uh, so now I'm draining the brakes like I said I was going to do, and that's it. This is the last thing holding my axle up. So, um, next I removed the calipers and the rotors. The calipers each just have two 13 millimeter or half inch slide bolts, and then the rotors just pull off. Sometimes they get real rusted. I'm doing this because uh, I'm putting my own calipers and rotors on here and it's going to make the axle lighter and easier to maneuver. Um, on the other side I have this crack in the knuckle right here and I'm um, going to have to remove this whole knuckle with uh, there's two cotter pins and castle nuts that we'll have to pry off. Doing the rear lower control arms here, it's the exact same as the front, it's that weird measurement 13 16 uh, You're going to need a wrench because this side goes over, the nut goes over the long end of the bolt and uh, yeah, comes out. Um, so there was a cotter pin here and a little cap and then it's a 36 millimeter axle nut. I use an impact gun to get it out. And then, um, so we're replacing the knuckle like I said. Here's probably a better picture of uh, the terrible weld someone did, especially down here. It's pretty bad. Um, so now we're going to pull out the cotter pins. Um, so there's one here and one at the bottom. And then do you know what size the castle nuts are? This is the bottom. That's what size it is? Yeah, yeah it's a uh, one and one eighths inch castle nuts on each of these. And then we should be able to pry it out. The top castle nut here was actually seven eighths. And then we're, we got to remove three bolts. One, two, there's another one over here on the knuckle that are 14 millimeters. So we can pull this face off and then pull the slide, um, pull the axle shaft out and slide the whole knuckle down off of these studs. The rear sway bar is a bit different than the front. Uh, there are four total, so two here, 15 millimeter bolts that would just hold this bracket. Um, and there's one on both sides. Okay, so I'm starting to repeat the same process on the other side. I just realized my vehicle has ABS, which the other one doesn't. So it's got this tone ring right here on the drive uh, axle shaft U joint. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm probably just going to disable that by pulling a fuse for now and try and fix that later because I think it requires new axle shafts. So as far as disconnecting the ABS, it should be as simple as going into your power distribution center and there's a fuse here and a relay here and I should just pull those. It should be disabled for now. Um, so when you're removing the ABS, there are two brackets, one here and one on the other side that are 10 millimeters. And then you can see there's uh, two more brackets but they're held in by one bolt on the um, top of the steering knuckle which we're going to remove anyway. And then there's one more 8 millimeter bolt right where the sensor is. So I found it easiest to uh, mount it on the very end of the axle, put a jack under each, and we got it positioned for the spring perch to be lined up, and then we should be able to start jacking it in place. Just to note that the Rubicon 44s don't come with ABS, so if you want, you're gonna have to change out your knuckle to have the little drill hole that would be right there, where you would plug in the ABS sensor, and you'd have to press 
a tone ring on the edge of the axle. Putting it back in can be kind of a pain. So with the jack on each end, I would recommend doing the upper control arms first. And once those are in place, we put in the track bar loosely so it holds. And then I put the coils in. I did have to compress them. Um, kind of annoying, but I got it. The uh, lower shock mount bolts here are, uh, there's an 18 millimeter and 15 millimeter for both. Okay, I hope you guys can see. Uh, so we're looking at the rear brakes. They're a little more complicated. Um, so first of all, here's the differential breather hose. It comes out of this junction. You see here's the axle. Here's the breather hose, so we got to pull that. Um, there was also the pump hose back here and a, a plug. But so anyway, so we're going to keep this. We're going to follow this back. There's a bracket right here with a, uh, what size is that? Hold on. That was a half inch uh, bolt on the back that you got to take off. And then here, um, so here's where we're really going to disconnect the brakes. You need a 7 16 open end wrench right here. And then it's a T, what is this? A T40 Torx bolt to remove this bracket. So we're going to remove both of these, drain the brake fluid. And then um, the only thing I have left to do is the track bar after that. I'm sure that's all done. And then mine, I think I'm going to have to use my brackets for mine because it has like bigger slots here for ABS and stuff. Also taking a look at the emergency brake here, I'd like to take this whole system and put it into my Jeep. Um, so there are two 13 inch bolts here and here that hold it to the body. I know it's probably hard to see in here, but here's the center console removed. There were two T30 Torx bolts under the rear cup holders and one um, 10 millimeter bolt in the, under the front cup holders. So I'm going to try and remove the emergency brake from here. Um, so I've heard you can put a 13 millimeter wrench on this and squeeze it to pull it out. I'm about to take this screw out and I think that's it. I'm not really sure if uh, there's going to be anything else needed, but yeah, I'm going to start with just, I think this is going to be the hardest part. So there was that little, I don't know if you can see that, uh, most of a circle clip that I had to pry off with needle nose and push a pin through. And then I did the trick, it worked. I put a 13 millimeter right over this, uh, I don't know what to call it, beveled end right here, and I was able to slide it right out. Um, so there's a screw here, I realized there are two more screws um, that I'll probably have to remove these, which look like 10 millimeter bolts, then I should be able to get this whole rubber piece out and slide the whole emergency brake out, and then I'm going to just reattach it to my handle. And now that we finally lowered, we have enough space here between the um, gas tank and the track bar to get at this, it's a T55, this is the last thing holding my axle. ABS is turning out to probably be one of the biggest pains on this project. I want to at least, even if I don't get a functional, keep the pieces of it in case I want to use it in the future. Um, so here it is in the drum, I don't know if I can even push it through that hole. You'll see here on the hub there's a hole that you can rotate around, um, so you can remove uh, some bolts if you want to actually pull the axle shaft. I'm hoping I can just remove this little ABS um, sensor and then push it through and keep it or maybe there's somewhere I can disconnect it farther back but that's the goal right now. Got my right rear ABS cable out. The way I was saying was the wrong way to do it. You cannot push this sensor through that hole. You have to unplug it. You see there's a plug right here down at the upper control arm and feed it all the way back through. It's the only way to get it out. You guys can see what I mean here. I taped over where the two ABS lines came in. Um, so I want to say this so I can remember in the future the one with the longer like skinnier wire is the one for the driver's side ABS just in case I try and rehook this up later and the other one's passenger side obviously and so I'm getting all the cables out and I'm going to save it all it seems pretty hard if you ever want to find new axle shafts to get ones with the tone ring I also didn't want to like press on a tone ring but I want to keep them just in case ABS is always a good thing to have so for some reason, I had a much, much harder time putting the rear axle in place than the front axle. Mainly just the control arms. Lining these up is incredibly difficult. Um, I would recommend trying to do those before anything. Like start with the upper control arm, and then um, the lower one maybe, and then put the spring in place, and then the track bar, and then the shocks and the sway bar relatively easy. Same with the brakes. But man, these control arms are not easy. I had to do a lot of putting punches through and pulling and prying and jacking back and forth. It took me like nearly a full day just to do both of the lower control arms. Um, but it's finally all bolted back up in place. Wish I could do a test drive right now, but I would need to. So the the drive shaft on a Rubicon, so for 
is uh, different. So they have different U joints, and the one from the LJ is longer. So my drive shaft right now will not work. I could change the yoke on my differentials, but I don't want to do that when I'm going to change the. Um, I'm just going to get a new drive shaft altogether once I get the new transfer case in. So in the meantime, I can't drive it, but oh well.